Hello, good morning everybody and welcome. Thank you for registering for today's masterclass, which is all about recovery. The last 12 months have been devastating for hospitality, but I'm hearing a lot more positivity from hospital members and the feeling of optimism is getting stronger and stronger. And thank goodness we can start to believe that we are at the start of the recovery period. Most businesses are planning to open on May 17th, with some being a little more cautious and opening a bit later in the following weeks and um, in some cases months. Of course, it depends so much on where you are located. If anyone listening today also took part in yesterday's masterclass on hotel valuations, then you will, you will have heard Bob Silk from Barclays declare that the three P's come into play when valuing a hotel, people, place and product. Place, location, is clearly the most important currently, currently <clears throat> for the UK population um, and their staycation plans for this summer. But just because demand is more obvious for coastal and rural locations doesn't mean that city and town centre hotels should stop creating demand through innovation and imagination. I'm so pleased to be joined today by Ali Powell from Commercial Acceleration. Um, there are a few people better placed to offer advice to anybody looking to improve their profitability and at the moment increase their cash flow. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's 11 a.m. It's Thursday, the 22nd of April, 2021. My name is Jane Pendlebury. I am the CEO of HOSPA, the Hospitality Professionals Association. We're both hoping that the next 40 minutes will be driven by you today. We want to impart the knowledge that we have gained from listening and watching the HOSPA recovery videos and share guidance and offer assistance to anyone with any concerns about emerging from the pandemic. You can pop your questions in the questions tab on the platform. Um, and if there isn't enough time to answer all the queries, we'll happily get back to you afterwards. Um, and actually afterwards, there will also be a recording and a summary of the key points available on the hospital website within a day or so. <clears throat> I get my voice back. Um, thank you for joining us. Ali, would you just like to introduce yourself and, and your company? Yes, thank you, Jane. Hello, everybody. I'm Ali Powell. So. Um, I have a company called Commercial Acceleration, which is all about identifying and increasing profitability. I um, absolutely adore hospitality. It's um, just in my DNA, like Jane, work for lots of the um, big players like Hilton Intercontinental Hotels Group, Premier Inn. And um, yeah, I, I now have my own um, company there so that I can help a variety of, of players. Brilliant. Thank you. I am now going to quickly share my screen. Can you all see that? Have you got yeah. um, the hospital recovery package working there? Right. OK, um, great. Glad that's working. Um, so this is um, where to find all the advice on our website, the URL um, hospital.org forward slash recovery. And you can also navigate to it through the COVID-19 pages where there's lots of other information and links to the very useful UK hospitality and government websites. Um, and as you scroll through these, you'll see lots and lots of different bits of um, short, sharp pieces of advice from many of our different um, people that we work with, partners, suppliers, sponsors and all sorts. So there's some, some key information in there. So please do feel free to um, have a look at that. Um, the more people that, uh, that look at it, the better. And also, um, if you want to add anything to it, then please feel free to um, put, a, put a request into us and we can do our best to um, share that on the website too. Um, it's constantly being updated, so please keep revisiting it. It is, it is a, a moving target, so just keep going. Um, and our plan to do it like this, to do it on a video basis rather than on a document basis was just to make it easier to find quick pieces of advice and then you can drill down for more advice if you want to. I was very concerned when we thought about doing this that we were going to end up with a thousand page document um, but I think this way you, if you start watching a video and it works for you then great you can drill down further if not then you can very quickly move on to the next one. So please, as I say, put some questions into the tab if you have any specific questions. Um, but I thought I would start today by just talking about how much easier it is 
at the moment for coastal and rural locations to pick reservation pick up reservations for this summer and um, the appeal is is so apparent and i don't need to explain to our expert audience today why that would be um, but i know that the city centres and town centres aren't finding it anywhere near as easy and in our conversations yesterday just when we were planning planning today's um, masterclass um, Ali told me a great example of uh, a hotel in London the Lanesborough Ali would you just like to explain what they have done to help um, increase demand for for a city centre property which is uh, so tricky at the moment yes thanks Jane um, so yeah I was very impressed um, by this Lanesborough example so um, there's a sort of popular series that's been called the the Bridgerton um, and it, I believe it's on Netflix uh, so the first one is recorded I think it's been such a success actually they've announced that they're going to do a second third and fourth anyway so um, very cleverly and creatively the Lanesborough have thought about how could they bundle something together that would be a win-win in terms of a win for the customer experience and a win commercially you know that's that's the that's the ultimate so and it's still on their website if you go on and have have, have a look or i can sh share, share the link in the chat um if you click on the lanes for a live like a bridgerton they put that put this lovely clever uh experience together because it was all very posh you know in those days like jane austen where you would book a you know very elegant suite um, which is what you know a great room rate attached to it and then as part of it you would also then um, go for a chauffeur driven tour around the film set you know where they filmed you think about all the other great um, films that have been taken place in London such as Notting Hill and Paddington there's all you know scope for this for for other hotel groups um, a historic tour around the hotel so they put together you know uh, four or five components here and then um, it's it's a great added value it totally stands out and differentiating and um yeah I, i'd love to speak with them to see the success of it that's brilliant yes i thought that was really inspiring but there's um they're not alone uh, they i think probably a lot of the audience will have attended our hybrid conference at the end of last year in november 2020 which we broadcasted from a studio that the royal lancaster hotel had put in and um, literally they had taken the whole of the lower ground floor and made it into a, a studio and we were able to broadcast our conference from there we were in the midst of the second lockdown um, and we were able to have 30 people in the room which gave us scope to have lots of live presentations and speakers and panels um, but that was a great use of their space by the Royal Lancaster I believe it's still there and although I think they're taking it away they might be bringing it back I think they they've sold that big room to somebody else over the summer but um, I believe they will continue to have that studio for some time and I've also heard lots of stories about people converting maybe small bedrooms in in town cities where they're not selling their bedroom capacity at the moment so they're converting those maybe into small meeting rooms um, there's a there's a lot of call now for um, businesses who've let their big offices go and are relying on teams getting together on a bit more ad hoc basis so bedrooms being turned into small meeting rooms is one way of increasing revenues in um, cities and towns um, and also meeting rooms becoming co-working spaces so the bigger meeting rooms can be turned into a co-working space um ali you were aware of one weren't you with with village hotels i think you were were talking about um, yeah. they yeah they've got a very impressive co-working space called uh, v works and it's um just a lovely simple pricing uh, model as well you know where you can have the fixed desk or the flexible and, and add in the, the lifestyle experience, you know, if you want to use a swimming pool and all that. So yeah, there's quite a lot of money to be made and uh, just a few others, you know, like Hoxton Hotel, but yeah, I totally agree with you. Turn, turn your meeting space floors. Some hotels have like sort of function area. Um, is that the best use for it anymore? Or could you drive better revenue, you know, revenue per square foot by doing something else? Yes, I think um, I think it's sort of universally accepted that meetings and events will probably be the last to come back. Um, so yes, make the most of those rooms whilst you can. And I did hear a very sweet story about the um, the Georgian house in Pimlico, who turned, I believe it was a bathroom, um, into what they're now referring to as possibly the smallest cinema in London. And they changed this little room into Pimlico Pictures, put in a, a 
a sofa, an armchair, big red armchair, big red, um, with um, mini bars and all sorts going on there and calling it Pimlico Pictures. So there's all sorts of um, great ideas. And if they get you some press as well, then all, all the better. Um, right, we are getting questions in already, which is great because Ali and I were hoping we could just be a bit more ad hoc and answer ask, answer questions as they come in. So there's one here from somebody in the southwest Cornwall, um, and they are saying they're delighted with the summer of 2021, and it's all looking incredibly good for them. Um, and 2020 was apparently quite good for them too, but they are concerned about 2022. Um, we did another webinar a few months back now, and we did a quick poll of the audience and something like 65% were happy to stay at home this year, but absolutely determined to go overseas in 2022. So I think that's a really um, astute comment to make actually that it's all it's great to make hay while the sun shines now but it's it's very wise to keep an eye on the future for those that are having a good time this summer um, and, and uh, yeah this lady is asking for any tips for the longer term now Ali I know that you have very strong views on loyalty and retention do you do you want to take that question on any tips for the longer term uh, yeah absolutely um, thank you Jay I'm hugely passionate about retention so um, yes, I, I would be thinking, you know, right now as you um, are able to capitalize on that, on that demand, it's how then can you, um, lock in sounds a bit formal, but you know, um, create a way that your customers are so um, delighted with you that they then start becoming much more of a repeat customer with you. So, you, you know, if we think of like a customer as a transaction, it's how do you keep getting them again and again that they ultimately turn into you know raving fans or loyalty advocates the different words that you could describe it and so yeah my, my suggestion would be to put in some form of a loyalty reward program right now so um depending on what level of data you've got in your crm or other things you, you could probably get a feel of each customer in terms of their lifetime history with you and could you right now sort of come up with some simple tiering way of um putting in them a form of, of, of loyalty recognition and start building up a relationship so that next year, you know, they, they definitely want to come back to you as, as well. I mean, they can come back all, all the time in the, in the meantime as well. But um, I think as much as people might want to go abroad to Dubai or whatever, I, I think if, if you've got something that works, you know, familiarization, I think that's a great appeal as well. You know, there's just no risk in that. You just can go back to your hotel and the staff love you and you've just built up this whole engaging content all the time, you know, showing them great things you've been up to. You can show it on video, you can write a newsletter, you, you know, to keep getting them coming back and back. Brilliant. Yes, and you did a rather nice video for us, actually. It's probably our most interactive video with, with the leaky bucket syndrome where you were saying, is it? 20 percent um just i'll let you quote it i don't want to get it wrong uh yeah it's, it's sort of like on average 20 percent of um customers slip away from the businesses every year so it's such a, a shame you know that you do all this work at the top of the funnel to to get in the acquisition of new customers but then they drip out of the leaky bucket because of you know like usually the eyes is just not focused enough on retention you know and, and that can be through service that can be through loyalty following up on social media so many ways but yeah if anything it, it's all about plug your leaky um bucket and, and i think we might touch on in a, a later about customer experience you know and just sort of sealing that throughout so that you you know everyone's happy at every touch point yeah absolutely so i think um the the results really do need to keep that in mind that um, ensuring their repeat business for next year as much as they possibly can um, and meanwhile the the ones that aren't benefiting from the demand so much the London hotels and whatever hopefully they are those that are being more successful are reaping the rewards of previous work that they have done on ensuring loyal guests and, and retention of those um, which reminds me actually of, of something I've said numerous times um, but the role of the revenue manager has changed significantly over the last year um, whereas the the London revenue managers were in the very lucky position of being able to cherry pick the best bits of business that were coming in and they really didn't have to think about generating demand um, and whereas those in other areas of the country less less with demand from business travelers and whatever were 
looking, trying to create demand, and that's flipped completely over, and the London revenue managers are now working as the resort and the rural ones used to, and trying to create demand, um, whereas the, the, uh, the, the lucky coastal properties are cherry-picking the best, hopefully. Um, and as somebody else said to me, if, if you're already full for the summer for every day, then you're probably missing opportunity. But um, there's, there's still lots of opportunity out there for, for everybody. Um, and on that, um, Ali mentioned their data, CRMs and whatever. It just reminded me that we have got a couple of uh, videos on the recovery page about data. One from um, the experts at BDO who have um, submitted one about data security and GDPR and just how you need to manage that data. I think we are all very aware of it, but um, a little reminder never never harms because there's so many areas where one can be make, make business vulnerable by um, a, a rogue bit of information or, or a rogue employee not, not saving things to the right place. So um, it's worth a look at that. Um, and Tierney's as well um, on data have put one up there about um, data breaches um, and also scams that come in. So they're, they're definitely worth a look at. Um, and we've got a, a comment here actually, so it's not a question, but in agreement um, on the Bridgerton, uh, on, on the Bridgerton initiative there, um, so I'm having trouble opening that full that full message for some reason, but um, yeah. So they there's, there's applauding people people applauding what the Lanesborough have done there, which is which is great. Um, so I think another thing that everybody needs to take more pay more attention to this year is um, to ensure the free flowing cash get more money into the into the into the businesses. Um, they need to get the message across that they can sell, 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 upgrade, up, upsell whenever they possibly can. Um, so there were, I think we may have already mentioned some, Ali, but you did another one where you had your top five tips, didn't you, for um, upselling and upgrading. Do you just want to um, touch a little bit on that as well? Yeah, I, I just think, um, you know, particularly with the restricted capacity of footfall that we've got now, it's just even more critical to maximise your spend per customer um and and you know un unfortunately as i go around um all the time I'm, I'm at hotels and restaurants sort of experiencing it you know unfortunately it's really like um 90 percent of the time i'm not upsold to now you know whether you like that word or not it's it's about um up experiencing in my eyes you know make, making suggestions of um, well, if you know, if you're having a, a steak, would would you would you like a red wine? Um, if someone wants a glass of wine, why assume that they want a small glass of wine? You know, they might totally want a large glass of wine. Um, and and there's all these things about just all the time thinking about how do you maximise the the customer experience? You know, by by making suggestions. You know, so that they don't miss out. They often just don't know what they don't know you you know and you can be suggesting and if you've got um a hotel with lots of facilities you know spas and whatever it's how can you make sure you're you're, you're cross-selling that and you know so when even when they're making an inquiry is is what sort of level of room type do you go in at is it is it the standard or do you come in higher so um i sometimes do upselling training and sometimes it's like the food and beverage staff that are sent to me but i feel it's the whole end-to-end -end experience, there's more money that can be made. You know, it shouldn't just be food and beverage. It's right up front at reservations and inquiries, of course, food and beverage, reception, you can be doing things. Spa, every unit of your hotel should be thinking like an owner in terms of how do you maximize the customer experience, but maximize, you know, the pennies as well. Absolutely, um, which reminds me of another video. I wasn't planning on doing all these plugs for people's videos on, on the um, on the recovery page, but um, Kira Crossan from Wedding Dates uh, put a great video together on that. She's all about getting um, weddings at the hotel, but uh, she started with the very key point, make them feel special right from the word go, and then they're much more likely to come back. Um, and Alliance as well, we're also talking about how to communicate with your guests and don't just rely on traditional email, especially as those are so often system generated, but 
put a more personal touch in through communicating through other channels, whether that's WhatsApp or messaging or direct Twitter, whatever it might be, there are lots of ways of communicating with your guests. And I think that it's it's really important to upsell everything, as you say, from reservation stage and on every single step of the journey, um, because people will have more money potentially in their pockets this year, A, because they haven't had the opportunities to spend so much over the last year, but also because their holiday has, has not they haven't got the flight and, and any um, additional travel costs just local internal UK ones so the disposable income disposable income should be um, should be quite free this year so a great opportunity so we need to make it easy for people to have a really great stay and if that benefits your bank balance then then all the better and I'm just going to go back to that comment I had that was me not opening the, the comment the one about um, the Bridgeton initiative um, it was the, the one at Aldwych um, this isn't necessarily current at the moment but one Aldwych were doing a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory inspired afternoon tea which I think was at the time where Charlie and the Chocolate Factory would have been just down the road from, from one Aldwych so absolutely perfect so any any ideas like that just to give people a, an excuse to come and visit your hotel um, so this is something that a lot of people have mentioned to me, um, both in right across the country, no specific locations, but um, this one says we are reopening with a lot less staff than normal. Any tips on how to work smarter? Yes, I think I think that is people are, are trying to offer more with less. Um, key to that, I believe, is having right from the very beginning, um, having, which is probably too late now, but having your marketing people and your revenue management people in in place and working their magic way before the hotel opens. Um, there have been lots of examples of, of websites where you could continue to make bookings even when the hotel wasn't open and, and worse still, you can't make bookings when the hotel is, is due to open after May 17th. So I think getting your staff working together as a team um, and Ali teamwork and leadership is a, is a key part of, of your sales and, and your training and, and your way of getting people to be more successful isn't it the leadership bit yeah yeah absolutely um, when I sort of spot things that you can be that can be fixed you know yeah you're always sort of looking higher up in terms of well what's the leadership going on here or what's the culture um, you know of the place so um yeah i i think if if you know from the start it's all about collaboration and the right hand knowing what the left hand is is doing you know and just getting rid of any silos um you know now like you say you've got to do less with more so it's just more critical for the people to just constantly be um you know getting on and and, and communicating just hard all, all the time i think it's um when, when your team is tight like that it's it it can be magical you can actually even do more you, you know with less but there's just sometimes just too many politics and whatever's just get in the way actually and and i think you, you know this could actually be something something really good which with, with fewer people whilst the pent-up demand gets gets stronger it's like that um old saying isn't it if you want something done give it to a busy person um because they will just churn through the work so maybe that will work true for, for, for leaner teams in hotels as well um, thank you for your questions please please do keep them coming um, there's one here which I think um, they're asking me just to explain about um, measures that one needs to put in place which I think a lot of people will already be aware of because most hotels did open since you know in between the, the various lockdowns um, but there are lots of things to remember one-way systems are a really good way of doing it um, and just using technology you can have a look back at some old webinars that we did uh, probably this time maybe May in 2020 about tech that's available to help people have less touch in the hotel so less physical contact but hopefully more engagement with with your guests and that can range from the, again the whole process right from from um, the arrival at the hotel but things like um, mobile key are difficult to put in uh, quickly but that can be done where you're even not touching a key card anymore but you've downloaded the key to your mobile phone that's one uh, easy way to do it but 
possibly a little bit more complex if you haven't already got the option to do that. Um, but I've seen people putting keys in envelopes and all sorts of things so that they're, they're not having to touch them. And then um, QR codes, left, right and centre, whether that's in the directory in the hotel bedroom or um, on a room service menu <clears throat> or in the restaurant, bar, whatever, to, to make orders um, and to uh, even settle accounts as well. Um, as you know, we have to be table service um, for, the, for the beginning of this reopening. So um, it, all the better if you can use QR codes. Um, and they're not quite as daunting as they used to be. You don't have to have a special tool to read, read QR codes. Most smartphones will just do it through the camera. Um, but not everyone knows that. So if you are using QR codes, make it really plain to people who are using it that they don't have to have a QR reader. They can literally just hold their smartphone to it and that will take them to directly to the menu or to the supplement or whatever. Um, so there is there is plenty you can do. And basics of having sanitizer around the place, um, you know, every corner, put a, put another sanitizer, make sure people are abiding by the mask rule and, and your staff as much as anything are doing that and then guests in, in public places. And also, I don't think you can shout too loudly at the moment about your new hygiene routines. The, um, your typical guest is, is probably feeling a lot more confident at the moment now that we've got the vaccine and um, the, the numbers are dwindling quite significantly here in the UK. But I don't think there's any harm in, at all in emphasising what you're doing to make sure that your hotel is super clean and, and hygienic. And I think the more you shout about that might just sway somebody to come to your hotel rather than a, another comparable one who isn't shouting about it, maybe doing it, but not shouting about it. So I would make that um, really, really clear. And then a big, big buzz at the moment is um, on sustainability. So there is a sustainability Web, um, video on the recovery page as well but that seems to be really gathering pace at the moment um, with going to net carbon zero I think with COP26 um, hopefully happening later this year from the government and, and Biden is doing a summit today I believe online um, for the for the key world leaders um, sustainability is is really important to 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 let people know that you are actually doing things to to be sustainable um, and that can be good for staff retention as well as for encouraging your guests to come and stay uh, I think it's something like 50 percent of the hospitality workforce are aged between 16 and, and 24 and I hate to categorise and, and, and put people in a pen like this, but they tend to be the people who have got much more of a passion for things like sustainability and, and ethical behaviour from a corporate responsibility point of view. So that can be another thing to, to really um, make sure your guests are aware and listening to. Um, have you got anything else to add on, on that, Ali, while I just have a quick read of any more questions? Uh, yeah, I mean, like you say, sustainability is a ma massive topic, and um, I think it's like, yeah, sort of get, getting getting one level down deeper, you know, in terms of when we say sustainability, it's 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 the whole shebang, you know, it's not just the environmental bit, but it's the the community aspect, it's the it's the mental health of you know, you know of, of your staff and customers. It's quite a a, a broader um, topic now, and um, yeah, I mean, it's something I've been impressed with as I've come across. Um, an accreditation called the REST accreditation, you know, responsible ethical um, spy quality and tourism, and it's it's a sort of a badge again that can be presented to show your customers or your employees um, what you're doing in this in this area, and they really um, su support you to um, achieve that if, if you wanted anyone to sort of help you work it through as a plan, yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's brilliant, um, and yes, lots of people are making helpful suggestions here on lengths of stay and um, I, I guess this really comes into play because again going back to my point about the, the city uh, revenue managers really were already on their length of stay they they weren't letting rooms on a Wednesday if they could let it from sort of Monday to Thursday for a, for a longer stay um, so I think longer length of stay is is obviously really key to getting people to fill your rooms and those Sunday nights which um, still can be notoriously quiet but put put an event make it experiential whether that's including a package that maybe is something if, you, if you're in London to Madame Two Swords or the London Eye or just another restaurant, uh, but just make it um, 
clear that that you can do other things whilst you're at the hotel. And if you make it easy for the guest to book, that's that's what they want. Um, I know. Again, um, I'm going to hand it back to Ali. She was telling me yesterday, which was something I had not crossed my path yet, about a piece of software that sits over the top of your in-house systems um, to to enable a guest to make one reservation with you, but that hits various points. Uh, all during their stay, so not just the room and, and uh, maybe a meal. Ali, I'm going to hand over to you to explain it better than me. Um, yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. So, um, yes, I mean, I think up to this point, the only sort of hospitality player I've seen doing this is Centre Parks, um, but retail are very good at getting you to, you know, have have a whole multitude of revenue that, that you buy with them, whereas in hotels up to now, um, a lot of it is we, we sort of do a separate booking for the room part and then we might have to go somewhere else for the spa bit and then the restaurant bit and it's all sort of a bit piecemeal and you know down to the point Jane's saying about the user experience that that cannot be ideal because you really just want to know at the time you know right well have I got that spa experience that I want have I got the table that I want you know and, and what else can I throw in like horse riding or whatever and um, yeah something I've been impressed with I saw a company called One Journey have come out with this sort of very simple e-commerce booking platform for hotels where you can just easily at the time, you know, book, book all of those different components. So, you know, it, it's like a win for the customer in terms of, again, sort of feeling excited that you've got this itinerary building up like Centre Parks has, you know, where you've got all these bits and it's so organised because it could just be on a, one email like bang. Um, and the hotel are just loving it because you're just optimizing your revenue and you know it's, that's a great moment to optimize your revenue when people are researching and getting inspired for um, what they're going to do but e even if you don't have that platform now um, you, you know some some I've obviously been booking hotel stays myself and I've been delighted that some of the staff are calling me you know to to try to offer me other things at the time such as um, horse riding or whatever and that you know you we can just go back to old-fashioned things like that um i know again it depends on what staff you have but just again it's just constantly trying to reduce churn you know to make the customers sticky because no, none of us want this no-shows disaster you know we, we just want everyone coming and ways of locking people in more is you know just keep getting them excited about right well how about we build in a um, horse riding and, and a cycling um and and then you know hopefully you you, you yeah you, you get whatever 100 percent of your people turning up yes no that's absolutely true and, and I'm, it's been um around for a long time that lots of people will look to see if there's a swimming pool at the hotel and book because there's a swimming pool but then not use it but it's the fact that it's there and it encourages them and i've seen some great initiatives from places like luckman park and the grove so those um resort type properties who at the moment because they're not allowed to be open are running outdoor events um again your horse riding comment made me think of that um and they're doing children's day outs in the ground so if you're lucky enough to have amazing grounds, then I think there's lots of um, innovative ways that you can get, get people in. And of course, you can do takeaway food and drinks as well. So that's that's a great way of getting some some revenue into the into the coffers. And then somebody picking up on you said something about no shows and they have asked about no shows in restaurants specifically i think we're probably pretty much okay with how we deal with no shows in hotels um it's all down to your terms and conditions i think it's becoming more and more acceptable now in in restaurants to either take a prepayment or to take a guarantee and alert the person who's booking a table especially if it's a party table that you will be making a charge if they don't turn up because it's the it's 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 worse than make or break at the moment. I think people are absolutely in in the pub and restaurant scene, especially. They are if they're lucky, breaking even at the moment if every table is filled all the time, and probably realistically not quite breaking even yet, but working to the point where they can, when they can open up a little more and have more people and have people indoors. Um, but I I think it's really it's okay to ask people for um, prepayments and to let them know and explain why. I, I think it comes back to communication, which it, everything always does, doesn't it? It's always communication. But explain why you're asking for a prepayment or why you're going to you tell them you're going to actually charge a cover fee of you know, was it 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds ahead if, if they don't show. But I think it's it's 
perfectly acceptable to let people that you know that you're going to do that. And if they don't want to book on that basis, then probably you will have demand elsewhere. Um, and again, make it plain and clear that that is what you're what you're doing. Um, somebody else here is saying that they, this goes back to loyalty really, I've got two screens here, which is why if I'm looking a bit vague, I'm looking at my other screen, um, and it's about uh, club membership. So on the loyalty, they have, they have created a new club which and enables people it enables them to communicate better with those people because they've accepted lots of things and they're, and they're part of the club um, and really there isn't an awful lot of benefit to being a club member but it just gives them that sense of belonging that sense of of being and all that sort of thing um, that, that that's got to be a good way forward Ali hasn't it that um, just to give people that sense of belonging Totally. I mean, and if you don't mind sort of telling me who you are, I would love to chat about that because I am hot on membership. You know, it's a form of loyalty. I used to work in fitness first. So, you know, it's all about um, memberships and, and customer lifetime value. So, yeah, I, I think it's brilliant that you've done that. Like you said, the, the, the trends are around community, local. And, um, yeah, I'd love to hear how you do, how you're planning on that model or how you could maximize that model because there's all different tiers. You could do with that you know about well you could have a standard tier that includes this parts of your proposition but for a higher level they could get um extra benefit benefits like a light lunch and whatever and then for the vip you could you know so i think memberships are fantastic i'm speaking to a few sort of hotels at the moment about how they could put those in place or sort of enhance what they've got because it it's a total win-win i mean Working in a lovely hotel, um, you know, I, I'm a member of Stoke Park, it's, it's a pleasure, you know, versus something, you know, in one of the coffee shops where it's stressful and noisy. So, yeah, hotel's an amazing experience to get memberships. Yes, and I think what also that will enable um, hoteliers to do is if they do have a quiet coffee shop one day or they've got very few bookings or whatever it might be is just reach out to that local community of members who possibly aren't going to use the, the property to stay in because they are local hopefully they'll put their friends and family in if they come to stay um, but just to say you know come for lunch today we've got a special offer on or we've just had a cancellation in the spa and we can do a massage this afternoon at two o'clock and, and just to get people along so from that from that local um perspective i think there's there's a lot to be said for having that community locally as well as as well as across the country and and indeed internationally as well but i guess we've got a little little while to wait until we can look for that international business yeah, yeah. Um, I'm totally and they can be doing that now look at look at your database about who already have you got that's local and then if you know now um it's the time to, to to build up that database you know to to reach out to locals you know like you know Jane said you could put on an event just to celebrate something to as a way of getting the locals to love you um mm. yeah no absolutely I think that's that's um there's so there's so much and I, I we we sometimes maybe it might be worth asking somebody else what do you think of the hotel and then they may say well what i particularly love is your gates at the entrance or whatever it is that's that's, that's that's different that you might just take for granted so then start shouting about that and, and encouraging people to enjoy the drive up the drive or or whatever it might be so that's great now we did only allocate 40 minutes for today um which is absolutely flown by I, I i think we could easily fill an hour between us um ali but i do like to um always start and finish on time so um we will pull that to a close shortly um but it, there are questions if we haven't got to your question um then please we will get back to you afterwards and if you want to send one in afterwards that's absolutely fine as well um, but thank you all for listening and for your questions. Um, and I'd like to thank all of the contributors as well to our recovery page. So um, the likes of Infor and BDO, Amadeus, Profit Room did a number, Alliance, Ideas, Tierneys, Pick PR, Sleeping Lion on Sustainability, Wedding Dates, which I think we mentioned. Uh, it's really generous of you all to share your tips for a successful recovery. So um, thank you very much for doing that. And I'm, I know they're a benefit to, to hoteliers and hospitality businesses because we've been told that daily. Um, 
Please remember that the opinions that Ali and I have expressed today are exactly that, our opinions. Um, they aren't necessarily right for everybody. If you need formal advice, then please do approach um, your own professional advisor or come to me at HOSPA and I can refer you either on directly to Ali or anybody else, anybody that's put a video together or other professional ad advisors as well. Um, thank you, Ali, for joining me today. It's been great to hear your thoughts um, and such valuable suggestions are, um, for improving commercial viability. That's, that's fantastic. Um, you'll find a recording of all our webinars and masterclasses on the website, and we also do a summary of the key points um, so that you can just jump to various bits if you want to. And some of the past ones are worth looking at as well if you've got any concerns about reopening um, and recovery. Um, this one should be on the website within about 24 hours. Um, thank you all for listening and we look forward to hopefully seeing you soon and please do keep in touch with us. Thanks very much for being with us today. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take care.